I'm back at my little farm, the community farm, the project that is happening here in East Sussex near Ditchling, just to the north of the South Downs in this beautiful and wonderful landscape. We like to come back from time to time and report on the goings, uh, the goings on, I suppose, of this project because more and more people are aware that they need to get back to the land and it's not so easy to become farmers unless you've got a lot of money that to buy some land and then to buy all the equipment. And the lovely Julia has come to join me on this. Hello. And we're thrilled to report that um, now my little farm has four Jersey cows. Well, one's a cross, isn't it, if I remember rightly? I think so, but I can't remember. Um, and one of them is a, a milker at the moment, is currently uh, able to be milked and they are milking. And the other three are all pregnant and um, they will be milking once they've got their calves and they've spent time with their calves and all of that. So one at the back, which is the darker one, is... Which I uh, think is the cross. Which is the cross as far as we know. That one is what? Uh, it's only got about six weeks or so, four, perhaps four less. Four six weeks, something like that left. Before the calf is born, which could be very exciting. And then the others who are pregnant, the other two, um, they're going to have calves Next in the spring. spring. So again, so in the end, there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of cows and a lot of milk to deal with for a small little farm like this. Um, so we're very excited to report that. Of course, you would have seen on our earlier visits, they have pigs uh, and piglets. We're growing all the time. They've got chickens and ducks, um, and of course, they're growing. Um, and a pair of sheep. Oh, oh, in a pair of sheep, yes. See one of them there now. Um, and, and of course they've got all their growing, which is really exciting. And it's the sort of project that if you're interested, the link will be in the description, you can get involved with yourself and become an investor and, and be part of this magical thing. And also you may be looking at this thinking, actually in our area, we'd like to do this. And I know that Kiva, who is, I suppose, the uh, head honcho, whose idea it was with Law, his partner, um, they'll be more than happy to share ideas and encourage people to do likewise, mm. um, at, through the financial structure of it, down to actually, you know, having animals and the, and all the, the restrictions that the, the government the and, and, and the all of that. Fiery hoops. Which they are learning. Daggers in. Yeah. <laughs> they're learning all the time. And it's really it's really encouraging. Um, and as much as possible, we want to put a positive spin on this because we need more farmers and we need more food. Um, so Oh yes, one of the members here, she uh, she said something interesting earlier, didn't she? Because we bought some posters, no farmers, no f well, no farmers, no food. Yes. We should be more farmers, more food. Absolutely. That brilliant. So like that's that. Vicky from the PFFA, the People's Farming and Food Alliance. And I think they're running with that slogan. Ah, um, yeah. More farmers, more food, which does put a positive spin. But the no farmers, no food um, concept is that warning to the public that we do need to support our farmers, um, whomever they are, and get involved if we can uh, by asking farmers if, you know, a collective of people could rent a field and grow things um, and or possibly have animals. Or even if you could go volunteer on your local farm, you know, if they're, if they're, if they're even interested. It. Especially those small farms, family run farms who may need help and, and need volunteers to keep them going and you may not get paid in money, but you may get paid in produce. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the rewards of actually getting back onto the land and putting your hands in the, in the soil mm -hmm. is so rewarding. Should we go and have a look? If, if you have even a little bit of, of you know, knowledge or experience in any of the areas of farming, I'm sure farmers would be even more inclined to, uh, to take, you know, Absolutely, to say, yeah. yes, please, I'd like some help. You know? Yeah, because people are so detached from the farming world and and food that appears on the shelves in the supermarkets and although we don't go to supermarkets for our food now we just go to farm shops because the the quality of the food is so much better um, but should we go and have a look at some of these lovely animals yes and hear the piglets squealing over there oh, yeah. and their mum <laughs> we'll go and have a look at those as well and see how they're doing
These are without doubt stunning creatures and it's hard to imagine um, a few years ago I was actually quite frightened of cows and now I'm more than happy to get into a field with them. Um, and they're very inquisitive animals and they love to come up to you and, and take the grass from your hand, especially of course the more humanized they are the more they interact with humans and, and that's very much part I think of a community farm because people on the community want to interact with the animals see that they're cared for and see that the that they are appreciated even though ultimately they might end up as um, a piece of meat on a plate or as these are milking cows and so they're going to be providing some very lovely raw milk which is full of goodness. Um, unlike the uh, pasteurization and homogenization, which is not as rich and healthy for you. They are mob grazing the cows or block grazing them as Joe, the, uh, the farmer here who's coming in at the moment three days a week, but it's gonna be here pretty much full time. I'm gonna move around where the light is, um, which is fantastic. And that, that is that you, you move the cows around your bigger field by restricting them with an electric fence. And they concentrate on one area, small patch. a small patch, and then you move them on so that the patch they've been on can recover and regrow. And this grass down here, look at it. Could you get yes. some grass? been a good few days of rain it's looking much better than it did last time we were here it was all yellow and dry and crispy yeah so they've got plenty of vibrant food here and down the bottom of the field they're going to put in a herbal lay um, of all sorts of different varieties of grass and of course the more variety you've got of all sort of different herbal grasses the better the milk absolutely absolutely not to mention that they can self-medicate yes and um, they, they innately lean towards what they what they need well yeah like most animals they know what they want and what they need for any illnesses that may pop along yeah. um, unlike yeah, us humans right. that mm -hmm. don't always know we ought to we ought to get back to those wonderful herbal um, tinctures and things that really help us rather than relying on somebody else who has manufactured white pills yeah that were actually made for something completely different and yeah uh, you know they've discovered oh actually it could be used for this absolutely so uh, let's go and have a look at the pigs then shall we yes <laughs> You can probably hear the dogs uh, behind. These are special guard dogs who are guarding the ducks and the uh, chickens from foxes and, and any, I suppose, interlopers that come on. Um, it just keeps the, the animals safe. Um, so we're over, I, I think it's called Toffee. Um, the, 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 the various animals got different names on them. I'm not yet sure if the cows have been given names as it's been up to the community to, let, to let name them. Um, but as you can see, Toffee here, very, very friendly and has some little piglets that are still, um, what do you call it when they're suckling? Yeah. Yes, um, absolutely beautiful. These, um, these were actually a mistake. Um, the, uh, one of the sows, I think, got out and got... Boars. Boars, yes, of course, and got hold of uh, one of the teenage sows from um, the last lot. And, and so these delightful piglets are the result. And there are other piglets on the other side. We're going to have a quick look at those. But they've all now been separated. The, the other piglets, the males, have been separated from the females because they're getting to a certain age. And, um, you know, you want to just restrict the amount of pigs you've got because you've only got a certain amount of land. But it's great to see um, so many improvements now as they're being moved around, given shade. They've got uh, their own arcs now. It's, it, you know, this is all work in progress. And um, the, the guys who are doing all this are just doing so well um, at getting this farm running in such a short space of time mm -hmm. with the animals. Mm -hmm. 
One of the community members is Vicky, and Vicky also has two hats as well as a hat here, um, helping out and doing what you do. Mm -hmm. But you're also on. Are you on the committee or a, a ambassador? No, I'm. Yeah, I'm part of the the volunteer team who run PFFA. And that's the People's Food and Farming Alliance. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, what's the connection then between the PFFA? And my little farm here in Dixon. Me, I you. guess. Yeah, right. I was a member here. Um, in fact, I started volunteering at the People's Food and Farming Alliance. Then I became a member here. Then I started working here as well. Um, and we were looking for um, a community farm to interview at the People's Food and Farming Alliance. And I was like, well, I know one. Yeah. So, um, so then um, Kiva came on and spoke about my little farm um, at the, for one of our PFFA uh, webinars. And yeah, that kind of relationship just has grown from there. And this is, I mean, the, the connection between the PFFA, which is doing sterling work in promoting farming and more farmers, more food, um, and this sort of thing. We want to see more of this happen, don't we? Yeah, we certainly do. And in actual fact, at the PFFA at the minute, we're just finishing off our community farm blueprint. Um, and over the next couple of months, I've got um, interviews lined up with different community farms. Basically, what we want to show is that there is no one, even though we've got a blueprint for doing the community farm, they're all different yes and there is no right way to do it or wrong way to do it everyone is going to create their own so we, we're kind of giving a general outline and then showcasing a few different community farms and all the different ways that they run so people can be inspired and think well actually I quite like the idea of doing that bit but I might I might add it with that bit to try to show people that there isn't one way to do it the way to do it is the way that will work for you yes and um, presumably the land that you have available it, yes. is going to dictate a lot. Of course, because depending on the size of the plot that you've got, it may not be suitable for animals, yeah. but you can grow vegetables. You know, you need a very small um, size plot to grow vegetables. Um, the more land, you know, animals take up a lot more land, but then they give you a lot more. So it's kind of exactly that. It's finding that balance of what is the land that you've got? How can you best utilize it? How can you get the most food from it? How can you be of service to your community? Yeah, and and also I suppose depends on your neighbours yes. and and all of that, and the weather. The weather, Depending which on... is beautiful today. Yes, it's uh, it's cloudy like it ought to be. You know, yes. nice fluffy Puff, clouds fluffy, in and fluffy out, clouds. in and out, instead of some of this uh, rather yes worrying white skies yes. that we've the, had the in duvet. the winter. Yeah. The sky duvet. Um, but it is amazing how how you, you know if the land. And the weather can really make a big difference about the type of the things you can grow yeah. and then the animals that you could have on that land. Absolutely, because you know, different grass types suit different animals. Here, what we're doing is we're introducing, you know, we've got the pigs, the chickens, they come along and they peck the top. Their droppings are fantastic. The pigs do a very good job of like scuffing up all the earth. And again, then that, so they're doing their bit. Then the, the cow, uh, the sheep come along and they graze the grass down whereas the cows just kind of trample it all down but they all work together you know we've had our, our chickens have been we've got um had some wire worm on some of our on the ground and because of the weather conditions they've been around they should have gone dormant by now but they haven't they're still here because the weather's not warm enough right but the chickens that's a treat for them. <laughs> so we've been setting them to work and we put them into small areas. They eat up all the wireworm. They have a lovely time and it gets rid of all the wireworm from that plot, which we can then put yes. our vegetables into. So, I mean, that's really interesting, isn't it? That the fact that certain animals can treat certain pests and you haven't then got to resolve to yeah, chemicals. Exactly, exactly. We're so fortunate here. We've got such knowledgeable farmers even though they're only young, and especially considering the average age of a farmer these days, yes. as are really young, but they are all really passionate, really knowledgeable. And yeah, they know how to utilize the land, the animals, and how that all works so beautifully that you don't need any chemicals. Exactly. Um, and, and when you allow land to do what it wants to do, and which is, to grow food you know yeah. if nature is doesn't stop you can see how abundant nature is and so it's just a case of getting the land back working for us with us yes so we all benefit absolutely and the, the, the finally the 
the great thing about community is people can come and learn that because we've been so separated from yeah. nature yeah. with our town living and the way that we go to supermarkets and everything's done for us that they can start to understand the connection between animals and the land the uh, plants and the land and get a real appreciation for nature and where we are in the in the biosphere absolutely and how we can you know i didn't know anything about farming a year ago um and now i can talk somewhat knowledgeably well, about some bits of it sound like you know what you're talking about <laughs> but what so another thing that we're going to start here is, is my little farmers so we want to teach children we want to help them to understand and to learn to love the land and what they can do with it and to see being a farmer as a viable future for themselves as a career yeah um, because we need more of that absolutely more farmers more food because where's the next generation going to exactly. come from exactly yeah. um you know these smaller farms like this there's so much that can come from them but we're going to need people younger people to carry that on for us yeah Concludes our little update here at my little farm near Ditchling on the on the south of England. Um, it's been a wonderful. To see, it's been well. It has been wonderful to see the cows. Um, to talk to Joe, who is uh, the farmer here, who is in three days a week to find out all about the new milking parlour that's going to be going up, about uh, what the cows are going to be doing during the winter, and we'll update you on that in due course. And of course to see all the work, there's so many people actually on site busy doing stuff. You can probably hear a lawnmower going off as they're cutting some of the grass that's getting out of hand around the veg here. Um, but um, it's so encouraging to see so many people supportive of this amazing community project, isn't it? And working together so beautifully, is, it is marvellous. And today we are blessed with a bit of sunshine, so that makes it even more better. I think we're going to go and get something to eat now, aren't we? Yes. So we'll catch up and we'll do another update in a few months' time. Till then, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. Bye for now.